And previously, as Deputy Chair, together with my Labor colleagues, I issued a minority report following the, the government's inquiry into the 2004 federal election campaign, in which major changes to Australia's electoral enrolment were contemplated by the government on the, I can only say, the fraudulent claim of protecting the integrity of the electoral roll. Uh, again, I feel like a uh, a robot repeating this, but uh, I'll keep repeating it until this election, and I'll keep repeating it through the where a lot of people uh, are interested in how this disgraceful plan to close the electoral roll on the day the election is announced came about. In uh, 1983, uh, when this was last done, uh, when uh, former Prime Minister Fraser and a previous Conservative government ran Australia, nearly 300,000 people lost their right to vote. Um, we had an inquiry um, Im immediately after the last elections at which no evidence, no evidence, not just little or infinitesimal, no evidence was adduced uh, that said the uh, electoral roll in Australia had uh, serious problems with it. We uh, went to hearings all around the country. Uh, we uh, considered these matters very carefully. We asked witnesses to provide us with this evidence. Uh, no evidence was provided. There were lots of complaints and lots of issues about other things, but to make a decision to change the, the requirements of Australian democracy for hundreds of thousands of people based on no evidence um, is uh, a scandal. So one in a million uh, one in a million were proven cases of uh, electoral fraud, and they weren't done for political reasons. And on that basis, on that basis, Acting Speaker, we are now going to prevent hundreds of thousands of Australians being able to use the normal period that they're used to, that I'm very proud to say Labor put into practice after the chicanery at the 1983 elections. Um, they're going to deny hundreds of thousands of Australians uh, the right to use that period, the week after the election is enrolled, to fix up their electoral enrolments and be at the right polling booth and to provide the Electoral Commission with some information so that the election can be conducted with some order. I predict there is going to be chaos at all the booths, and the government is squarely responsible for this. The two ministers, uh, Nairn and Abbotts, uh, will, will, uh, uh, their name will be chaos in terms of Australian electoral history, because that's what they're bringing uh, to the uh, Australian people. We predict uh, these uh, statistics are astonishing, uh, Acting Speaker. At the end of 2004, there were 13,175 uh, voters on the electoral roll. At the end of 2006, there were 13,081,539, a drop of 33,000 over a year. Why has this happened? Why is it important? The main reason that people go off the electoral roll is that they change address or forget to update their enrolment. When the AEC notices that they're no longer resident at their early address, it quite rightly removes them from the roll. The AEC has stepped up its work of checking the roll so that the rate of removal is rising. In 2005-06, nearly half a million people are removed from the rolls. Now, my colleagues, uh, the members of Bendigo and Chisholm, will know this: that when you're, you're getting your update from the AEC, you'll notice something is happening every month you're getting more people taken off the roll in your electorate than are, than are going on. This is happening in all of our electorates right across Australia. Uh, a secondary reason that this is happening uh, is that people who leave Australia are rapidly removed from the, the roll. The proportion of people becoming newly eligible to enrol because they have turned 18 or become Australian citizens and they're failing to do so. If the level of enrolment is fall, falling at the, at the rate of 30,000 a year, and it will actually be higher than that because the population is growing, that means at the end of a three-year cycle we'll end up with 100,000 people who may not be enrolled or may be incorrectly enrolled. In the past, this wouldn't have mattered much because when the election was announced, these people realised that they were not enrolled at their new address, were not enrolled at all, and used the five-day period uh, of to enrol. Now they'll no longer have that option. This is an election year, and of course, a certain number of these people will take action to get themselves enrolled well before the election, but many will not. The government says it will ask the AEC to run an awareness campaign before the election encouraging people to enrol. Well, we've always run these campaigns and they have some success, but you know, uh, 
We only managed to get enrolment up to the level that it's been, and it, it won't go higher than that. I support these enrolment drives. I support the AEC. I support their advertising campaigns. But I have to ask, does the AEC know the date of the election? I don't think so. I've heard lots of government members um, gabbling around this house saying it's the first week of, uh, uh, of November, but I don't think they know either. Um, most people expect it to be in late October, or, but under our system the Prime Minister can call an election whenever he likes. We've, been, we've seen speculation that the Prime Minister, seeing his political position deteriorating, may opt for a snap early election, perhaps straight after the budget. All of these things are possible. All of them are an argument for Gough Whitlam's great vision of a four-year term for uh, Australia, four-year fixed terms where, like other democracies, we can uh, go to uh, our elections with the enrol the, the, our professional electoral commission fixing up enrolments where citizens can know they can come at a regular time uh, when government uh, isn't determined by such a short-term process as our current three-year term or by the whim of, uh, uh, of a prime minister of whatever political party. What would happen to the AC's awareness campaign in the current circumstances? It wouldn't happen. Possibly several hundred thousand people would be caught out with no time to enrol. Members opposite apparently say, serves them right, they should have enrolled. We say most Australians have higher priorities in life than politics and should not be disenfranchised for the crime of not paying attention to the date of the 2007 election. We have a very good system of democracy in this country. We have, we have a very high participation rate with our compulsory voting system, and we have a double duty with the compulsory voting system to see that the, the uh, democratic franchise is as wide as possible. You can't possibly target groups of young people, Aboriginal voters, people who change uh, addresses quite often because they may have rental properties. Um, uh, and, and disenfranchise them when we have a compulsory voting system. Some people who are cynical, like me, might think that there's a deliberate plan or a hand uh, of uh, Texter Crosby in all of this, who's trying to, uh, in, a, in, a, in a liberal worldview, cut out affiliations from unions, um, uh, permanently disenfranchise the Labor Party by seeing that we're not in government, by cutting out salami-style uh, Aboriginal voters, young voters, uh, rental accommodation, people who the government thinks this process will disenfranchise. Uh, my suspicion is that the Liberal Party research team who advised the government that the majority of people who will be eliminated under these circumstances will be Labor voters, so that freezing them out of the political process would be to the government's political advantage. Now, current and former ministers' uh, plans have to be seen in the context uh, of, of this. There's no other way of describing it, uh, Acting Speaker, as a disgrace, a negation of the principles of democracy in this country. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that Labor has opposed these changes, and we oppose them all the more now. We can see the evidence from the AEC report of their likely effect on, on the level of enrolment. Um, and I can make this pledge, as I know the Shadow Minister has to this House, uh, we will repeal the harmful changes to the Act um, if we're in government after the election. And that will be a great thing for Australian democracy, along with our other plans for uh, a referendum on Australia becoming a republic, uh, looking at ideas like four-year terms and many other democratic initiatives that should be seriously undertaken by a modern reforming uh, Rudd government. I can see a great democratic future for Australia, but it's not going to be under this government, it'll be under a new government.